Diversity is our strength. That is Toronto's motto. But sadly, today we are seeing that diversity in the faces of the victims of Monday's horrific van attack here on Young Street and at Finch. Of course, this is the growing memorial that has been sprung up spontaneously on Monday and has been growing since then. We're starting to learn about the identities of the people, the victims, those who died. They were grandparents, students. One was a single mom, and she came here and was doting on her seven year old son who's now facing a life without his mother and even having to leave Toronto. She was um, very helpful to the society and she was generous and kind. That's the most important uh, uh, qualities uh, that I mentioned. Reverend Ahangama Rathanasuri first met Amara Singha 15 years ago when she joined the congregation at his temple in Scarborough. She would help with the services and volunteer her time. Reverend Rathanasuri says the last time he saw her was Sunday with her son. We had a celebration at the Sunday school uh, that is called uh, New Year celebration. Uh, so she brought that small child to that celebration where the small children were dancing, singing. The Reverend says when Amara Singha gave birth to her son, the father disappeared. And so she raised him on her own, trying to balance work and her love for her son. She brought that child to the temple because she wanted to raise the child in a proper way. She sounds like she was a very strong woman. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That strength showed in her life. Amara Singha had gone back to school as an adult, graduated, and in 2015 started working as a nutritionist for the TDSB. Board Chair Robin Pilkey released this statement. On behalf of trustees, we extend our sincere condolences to Renuka's family and friends. This is a difficult time for the students and staff that knew her, and we will continue to provide support to them in the days and weeks ahead. Adding to the horror of Monday, it was Amara Singha's first day on the job at her new school, Earl Haig, which is just two blocks over from Young. She had just finished for the day and was likely heading home to get ready to pick up her son from school. As for the other victims, we're hearing similar stories. They haven't all been identified, but we have seen some families willing to share their grief with the city. 30-year-old Anne-Marie D'Amico, who was an employee at an investment management firm and was a longtime volunteer at Tennis Canada. 80-year-old Dorothy Sewell, she was confirmed to be one of the victims by her grandson, Elwood Delaney. Chu Min Kang, who goes by the name Eddie, was also been identified as a victim. He was a chef at Copacabana. City News has learned that his wife is on her way from Korea. Munir Al Najjar, who was in his 70s, was a Jordanian citizen visiting his family here in Toronto with his wife, that according to a family friend. Seneca College sent a letter to students on Tuesday, notifying them that a female student died in the attack, but the school did not name her. All of these deaths are a tragic loss for the city, but we may also lose one more, Amara Singha's son. His guardians live in the U.S., and he may have to move there. He, he doesn't know that much about the, the passing of the mother. It's still a lot to process for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we now are learning that another victim has been identified. Uh, she is uh, Betty Forsyth, who lived in a Toronto community housing complex not far from here. She was nine, in her 90s, believed to be 94, and one of her friends, Mary Hunt, uh, says she was a person who loved to feed the birds and squirrels in the neighborhood and had regular walks through there. She was a lively person. As for uh, funeral arrangements for many of the victims, uh, that has not been made public yet, but we do know that uh, they will be expected over the next few days.